Hello, trumpet friends. All right, in this one, we're going to take a look at Lipsler. Frequently asked questions, what they are, how to practice them, if they're any good, what they're good for, you know, all that good stuff. So, uh, but first, let me check out this sweet Japanese hotel room. Pretty fancy. Uh, yep, that's cool. Tokyo. Oh, yeah. Nice, 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 nice. So let's get right to this thing. First of all, lip slurs. What are lip slurs? Maybe you've heard the word lip slurs, the word lip flexibilities, and you do not know what that is. So here we go. Basically, a lip slur is this. On the trumpet, as you may have figured out, or as you may know by now, you can play more than one note using the same valve combination. Uh, with these three valves, we only get seven valve combinations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, there's actually technically eight because you can press down the third valve alone, but because of the way the tubing works, third valve and one and two are going to give you pretty much the same notes because they have this generally the same length of tubing there. So we've got seven valve combinations, but we have 12 chromatic pitches. So the way that the trumpet is built is that you're able to play more than one note with a valve combination because of something called the overtone series or the harmonic series. The overtone series, the harmonic series, that could be a whole lesson uh, in and of itself. But basically all you need to know is that you can play more than one note on the trumpet with the same valve, like so. And in that amount of range, there's actually uh, one note that I skipped in there, the B flat, right before you get to the high C. Since you can play more than one note with the same valve combinations on the trumpet, there's two things you need to do, basically. You need to get your ear locked into what each one of those notes is. So you need to be able to tell the difference between the low C and the G above that. Because otherwise, how are you going to know what note you're playing? Could be playing a G, could be playing a C. And until you train your ear a little bit, um, there's really no way to tell. So that's the first thing you need to do is train the ear. Secondly, you need to train yourself to actually be able to get from one note to the next on the overtone series and to be able to play those notes without the use of the valves. And what that's going to do is it's going to tra train the way that you use your air. It's going to train your embouchure. It's going to train the control of your aperture or just the little hole right here that the air is passing through when you play. And it's also going to help you learn control of your tongue. All of these things are going to improve your technique, your ease of playing on the trumpet, your sound, blah, 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 blah. Very, very important stuff. It's going to make you a better trumpet player. You dig? Now, how do lip slurs change the note? Or how do you change from one note to the next? What is actually happening while you do that? Essentially, what's going on is that you're creating a faster vibration here at the aperture. The lips are creating a vibration while you play, and then that vibration is exciting the airstream inside of the trumpet. So when you play a low C, that's actually a slower vibration. The lips are vibrating at a slower speed than they are to play the G. Now, how the heck do you, do you control the vibration of the lips? Well, you don't really. You just get the feel of what it feels like to play those notes, and then that vibration is just happening. There's no real way to, as far as I know, to know exactly how many vibrations per second you're making with the lips. We don't really focus on the lips in that way. We're not actually buzzing the lips. We're not trying to create a buzz or a vibration when we play. It's just happening as a result of two basic components. And those two components are the speed of the air passing through the lips and the tension in the embouchure in the lips or the resistance in the lips, which is pushing back against that airstream. So just to get a, a good feel for that, check this out. If I just flap my lips like this, 
then you get that sound that the vibration creates that pitch and that's happening because of the two things right i'm blowing air through the lips and then there's a resistance here in the lips because it's pushing back against the airstream that's coming out and that's what creates the flap if there was no tension in the lips then the lips would just fly out into the distance but there is a tension there they fight back and that's what creates the flap or the vibration and i just want to hip you guys to that because some people talk about tension in trumpet playing as if it's a bad thing as if what you want to do is actually have no tension at all but that's not actually what's happening without the tension there's not going to be a vibration so excessive amounts of tension while we're playing can have a detrimental effect on the sound on your range and, and how easy it feels to play but without tension in the right places you're not going to be playing at all so the other thing that you want to keep in mind when we're talking about lip slurs and lip flexibilities is that the lips aren't necessarily the thing that's changing the note. They are a part of trumpet playing, they're a part of the equation, but remember you also have the speed of the air passing through the lips. So I'm going to turn the sound off and I'm going to perform a lip slur from low C to G to C. <laughs> And I just want you to watch my chops. I'm actually going to go higher than that. And just watch the chops, okay? Just note the movement in the embouchure. So there's not a ton of movement there. There's a little bit of a pivot when I go from the low C to the G. But once I get above that G, above the C, above that, it's all pretty much in the same sort of zone. There isn't an excessive amount of pivoting or movement. I'm not smiling or stretching out the lips while I play. And really what's just happening is that I'm using the tongue, which you will learn through practice how to do this, but you're using the tongue to direct the speed of the air coming out of the mouth, through the mouth, out of the lips, and then through developing your embouchure, your embouchure learns how to hold the chops together, resistance, the tension in the muscles, and by holding them together, you get the vibration. So really, some people call these um, not necessarily just lip slurs, but also some people refer to them as tongue level exercises, tongue placement exercises, airspeed exercises, whatever. So I don't want you to think about lip slurs as if it has to do with just the lips, but rather that's just the name of the exercise. Now, are lip slurs necessary and what is the point of practicing them? Uh, truth be told, lip slurs are probably not necessary. A great trumpet player, Rafael Mendez, he's got a, a uh, an old video. If you don't know who Rafael Mendez is, Rafael Mendez had some of the best trumpet technique of all time. It's crazy double tongue, triple tongue, lightning fast fingers all over the horn, not a problem. And he says in this instructional video, all you must practice is scales, scales, and more scales. And he's not the only guy I've heard say that. Um, there's a lot of great trumpet players that say that you don't need to do a lot of lip slurs, maybe just five or ten minutes a day, maybe none at all. And if you're just playing all the time, you're playing scales, and you're developing your technique, then you will learn the refinement of the aperture here and how to get the right vibration and how it feels to play each note. However, there are also other great trumpet players who attribute uh, their technique and incredible playing register to lip slur routines, lengthy lip slur routines over a period of about a couple of years. And that is how they learned the, uh, what it takes to be able to play really well. So they are probably not 100% necessary, but they are a very good exercise. Uh, they get right to the heart of the matter. Since you're not using the valves to play and since you are not using the tongue to articulate the notes. So here's the first example is I'm going to articulate the notes. I'm going to tongue them. Ta, ta, ta. Ta, ta, ta. 
Okay, now the lip slur, I'm not going to tongue it at all. Just ho. So tonguing the note actually makes it a little bit easier. Uh, so when you're doing these as just lip slurs, then you're kind of, what's the analogy here I'm looking for? You're taking away the training wheels in a way and you're getting right down to it. So they are a good exercise to practice. So there you have it. That is an introduction to the wild and wonderful world of lip slurs. Uh, if you want a little bit more guidance on how to practice these things, as well as some example exercises for the beginner or if you just don't really have like a set routine and you're just looking for some ideas then swing by blackwellstrumpetbasics.com i'm going to include a link below and uh, i'm going to have another video there with suggestions for actually getting the knack of doing this if you are having trouble or if you just don't know what to do so that'll be something that you need to sign up for with your email address it is totally 100 percent free and i will not spam the crap out of you with email but i do send out a newsletter about once a month or so, whenever I've got some new content up on the website for you guys. So, if you're looking for some more juicy lip slur material, swing by the website with the link below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, we will go ahead and make some more of them for you. Another thing too, in the comments, if you've got any specific questions about lip slurs or general trumpet technique, please put those down there. I want to start making some videos that cater a little bit more to beginning players, uh, self-starting players. I know myself, I get on YouTube whenever I want to learn how to do something that I do not know how to do. So I assume that that's why some of you guys are here. But the thing is, truth be told, it can be a little bit difficult for me sometimes to come up with ideas of what a true beginner would want to know. So if you can help out in that way, I would certainly appreciate it. And I'm sure many other YouTube viewers would as well. And that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for your time. And I will talk to you later.